If there is one plant or type of vegetable that is most famous for producing in abundance, it is a courgette or a zucchini plant. And I have found that it can be incredibly productive, providing a seemingly never-ending supply of courgettes or zucchini right through the summer, all the way up until it starts to get too cold in the autumn. But these plants can also produce massive courgettes, usually referred to as marrows, if they are left on the plant too long. It is one crop where the timing of harvests is important, and we try to harvest more frequently, especially when the weather is warm enough for rapid growth of the plants. But I have wondered what the impact uh, that the size of the courgettes are harvested has on the actual productivity of the plant. And the small trial that I did this year gave some interesting results that I wasn't anticipating. I used to get stuck in a cycle of only harvesting courgettes that were larger than I wanted from the gardens, as I didn't want to waste anything, and I felt I needed to eat these or pass them on to others before harvesting the medium-sized courgettes that most people generally prefer to eat. By the time I got back to the gardens to harvest, the courgettes I had left on the plants had generally grown bigger than I would prefer, and the cycle of struggling to get through too many large courgettes would continue for a lot of the summer, and I see a lot of people struggling with the same thing. These days I tend to pick and eventually throw in the compost any courgettes that have grown too big, and to then harvest the courgettes at a size most people would prefer to eat. And we try to harvest every two days during the warm part of the growing season to try to reduce the chance that any of them will get too big, but there's always one or two that remain hidden and continue to grow until they are way too big to miss. By picking the courgette fruit smaller, I felt that we were producing more of what people would prefer and reducing the total amount of kilograms a plant would produce. This is a bit counterintuitive, as generally in the gardens I try to grow as much as I can, but I felt it was necessary to try to reduce the chance of a glut at certain times of the year that would simply not get eaten. But I've also noticed that harvesting courgettes when they're small prompts a plant to produce a lot more fruit, so the overall weight of courgettes harvested might actually end up being about the same. And I wanted to see how the plants would respond to more frequent harvesting compared to letting the courgettes get really big, and to see what this would do to the overall yield. So I decided to set up a side-by-side -side trial of six plants on the side bed of one of the larger polytunnels. With all six plants sown at the same time, with the same variety of courgettes that have grown for quite a few years. I planned to harvest the courgettes from two of the plants when they were really small, within a day or two of flowering. I would pick the courgettes on another two plants when they were typical or medium size. And I would leave the courgettes to grow on the fifth plant until they were quite large, and continue to let them grow on the sixth plant until they were full size marrows. The seeds were sown in the middle of April into seed balls rather than pots, a technique I had recently seen another grower use, and the seedlings were transplanted into the tunnel three weeks later, spaced about one meter apart. I began harvesting the first of the small courgettes 56 days or eight weeks after sowing, and tried to harvest them when the courgette fruit was between 100 and 200 grams each. The courgettes from the medium plants started to produce a few days later, and I tried to harvest them when they were between 200 and 350 grams each. The large courgettes were ready to harvest a few days after that, and I tried to pick them when they were between 500 and 800 grams. And the first marrow was picked 11 days after the first small courgette was harvested, and the marrows harvested from this plant generally weighed between 1.5 and 3 kilograms. I allowed the plants to grow without pruning out any of the older leaves or removing the side shoots that occasionally grow on these plants, as I wanted to see how the plants would respond to the frequency of harvesting. It is a small sample size in this experiment, and the differences in the way the plants grew could be a natural variation, but the plants that I harvested more frequently from grew a lot larger and with a few large side shoots. And the plant that was left to produce marrows stayed noticeably smaller without any side shoots, which makes sense now that I think of it, but this difference is not something that I anticipated. Many of the plants eventually grew too big for the space, and I found that I was damaging the leaves and vines when moving around the plants. And it was getting increasingly harder to find all of the courgettes in among the abundant growth, with a few of them growing bigger than I would have wanted for that plant, which would have affected the data a bit. I eventually pulled out all the plants and ended the experiment in the second week of August, 
about eight weeks after the harvesting started, uh, some of the plants were just getting too big. There was still a few months of possible growth in the season and all the plants would have continued to produce. But I think some of the larger ones were at risk of rotting at the base of the plant and dying back. It would have been interesting to see what would happen to the, all of the different plants if they had been left to grow for another month or two. I kept track of all the harvests, weighing all of the courgettes and keeping track of how many were picked from the different types of plants. The plant left to grow the largest fruit produced only 14 marrows, about one every three or four days on average, and this plant remained relatively small. This was a big difference from the plants growing the smaller courgettes, which produced about 56 courgettes each, slightly more than one a day. These plants grew very large, with several side shoots each, which made it really difficult to find all the courgettes when harvesting. It makes sense that if I harvested a recently pollinated courgette when it was quite small, the plant would want to grow more to replace it. In order to do this, it would have to extend the vine, producing more flowers and more leaves. So, of course the plant would get a lot bigger when compared to the plant that put a lot more resources into developing the marrows, which were relying on the photosynthesis of the existing leaves rather than having to grow new ones. I hadn't thought about this before, but it makes sense. Looking at when the courgettes or marrows were harvested, the marrow plants seemed to be very consistent, producing the same number of marrows throughout the season. But the plants producing the smallest courgettes were definitely producing more each week as the season progressed. No doubt due to each plant having grown several vines or side shoots producing more flowers and more fruit. These plants also had an increasing amount of leaves leading to more photosynthesis. It would have been interesting to see how much longer this expansion could have gone on assuming that the warm weather continued and we were able to continue to supply enough space, water and nutrients for the plants to continue to grow. The plants that produced the medium-sized courgettes produced about twice as many courgettes as the plants that were designated for marrows, but about half as many as the plants that were harvested really small. This makes sense that they would be partway between the two, but what surprised me was that the plants that I was picking the larger courgettes from produced about the same number of courgettes as the medium-sized plants. The plant with larger fruit actually produced a few more courgettes, but I suspect that this is because of damage to one of the plants dedicated to medium-sized harvesting. I would have expected there to be a gradual step change in the number of courgettes harvested between each of the four different sizes. But it seems, at least from this small experiment, that when the courgette is within a certain size range, it doesn't change the amount of fruit the plant will try to produce. If harvested below that size, the plant seemed to be triggered into producing a lot more courgettes, but if left to grow into marrows, then the plants produce significantly fewer. The plants for medium and large harvesting, producing the same number of courgettes, translated into significant difference in the yield, or the total weight of the crop that was produced. It seems that once the courgettes grow to a certain size, letting them grow bigger is easy for the plant to do, or they don't seem to be an additional cost to the plant. But having to grow more flowers to produce more courgettes and growing the additional leaves that goes along with it all does have an additional cost to the plant, or it diverts energy and nutrients away from simply making the existing courgettes bigger. So it is not surprising that the total yield from the plants that were producing the smallest fruit would have been lower as the plants had a lot more work to do. But it is not as low as I thought it would be, producing about 75% of the total weight that was produced by the medium-sized fruited plants, even though there were close to twice as many courgettes harvested. But part of this larger-than-anticipated yield would have been because I missed a few courgettes that ended up growing considerably larger than planned, but this happened on most of the plants. At the other end of the scale, the total weight of the marrows harvested was less than 10% more than what was harvested in large-sized courgettes. So it seems that after the courgettes are left to grow to a certain size, the plant doesn't focus on producing more total weight, probably because the focus shifts to putting energy and nutrients into developing the seeds inside. So if I pick most of the courgettes quite small, the plant will grow a lot larger and I will end up getting a lot of small, crisp and more flavorful courgettes and the overall yield will be a bit lower. But compared to a lot of other vegetables, the almost 10 kilograms per square meter that these plants produced is a lot, and they were only growing for part of the season. 
if I had pruned a lot of the older leaves and pulled off any of the side shoots, the productivity of the plant would probably go down, but they would be easier to manage and to find all of the courgettes, and they would probably grow for longer in the season. If I leave the courgettes to grow to a medium or more typical size, the yield increases a bit, the number of courgettes produced goes down significantly, and the texture of the courgettes changes a bit. Letting them grow even bigger, either intentionally or by accident, will dramatically increase the weight of courgettes that each plant will produce. But I feel that this is more of a watering down of the flavor that was in the medium-sized courgette, and the seed cavity starts to develop and soften. If I wanted to produce the biggest weight of crop in the gardens, leaving the courgettes to get to this large size would definitely help. But I find that a lot of people don't like eating them when they get this big. And it seems that preventing the courgettes from growing past the medium-sized stage is one of the most effective ways to reduce the excessive amount of courgettes that I need to try to use up to pass on to other people or to reduce the amount that I end up composting. Leaving them to grow even bigger into what would normally be called marrows really reduces the number of fruit that need to be picked. And the plant does not seem to produce a significantly heavier weight. But what is growing will likely store for a lot longer into the winter, though they may never get eaten. At either the large or marrow size, these plants produced more than 30 kilograms per square meter of bed space over a seven or eight week period in the summer, with the plants only occupying the bed for a total of three months, which is a massive yield even for plants in the polytunnel. But the marrow plant was substantially smaller, and I suspect that it would produce marrows for longer of the season than any of the other plants, which were just getting too crowded. So it all depends on what I want to eat, or perhaps more accurately, on how frequently I get around to harvesting. If I wanted to produce as much to eat as possible from a small space, then leaving them to grow to marrow size definitely has its advantages both with the smaller plants and the less frequent harvesting. I think I would still avoid harvesting uh, most of the courgettes at the larger size, if I could help it, as the plants become quite big compared to the marrow plants, though the yield is still impressive. The typical medium-sized courgette is probably still the best option for balancing yield and most people's preferences, and this is the size we usually end up harvesting from all of the plants that we grow in the gardens. But at the end of all of this, I still prefer to harvest the courgettes when they're really small, as I like the more intense flavor, even if the yield is smaller. But I need to take into account that this will prompt the plants to become a lot bigger, so I either need to give them a lot more space, prune the older leaves, or to grow a replacement crop halfway through the season, and then to pull out the first batch when the second batch has started to produce. I assume that a lot of this would be similar with the courgette plants grown outside rather than in the polytunnel, and with different varieties of courgettes, but I won't really know until I try it out. And I suspect that the plant spacing, the timing of sowing, and the care that we generally use for courgette plants is geared towards a producing typical medium-sized fruit. And I wonder how things would change and what varieties I might grow if my focus shifts to growing as many of these smallest courgettes as possible over the longest part of the season. Now that would be an interesting thing to explore.